board across the whole of the country, whether it's a charitable board, you know, whether it's to do with housing or, you know, or, or social care or, you know, things like RSPCA, all these chief executives, all these chairpersons are being paid an absolute fortune. And well, as, as chair of a company as I am, Ken, I, I can assure you I'm not being paid three quarters of a million quid uh, for doing the job that I do. Uh, but, but I have to say, I wouldn't mind it if I could get it. Well, I went on a governance of a school ball, got the biggest, highest vote in this country, 98.9% of the vote to become a governor of a school that I saved. But that was all for nothing. I never got paid a penny. But we, we also make choices in life. So uh, I'm a trustee of a national charity, as people know, and I bore them about. Um, and indeed, I chair a, t a tennis club, which is a non not-for-profit organisation. It's a cask. We make our choices, Ken. There are some things that we do altruistically and there are things that we do for payment or remuneration. Most people on most boards, charitable, bank boards, insurance company boards, whatever, non-executives, whatever you want to describe them as, are all on a jolly. And we all pay for that jolly. Um, I'm not sure necessarily that's fair. I think a lot of people actually do uh, important jobs and are held to count. Ken, going to leave it there because otherwise I won't get a chance to talk to my studio guest, who's Anthony Tascal. He's a trainer, he's an author, and we'll come to his stories next here on Talk. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, Uncensored, in New York City. Tonight on Piers Morgan, Uncensored, in Kiev, Ukraine. Tonight on Piers Morgan, Uncensored, a special edition from Qatar. Tonight, a special edition of Piers Morgan, Uncensored. Martina no rattle over. making me cry again. Do you believe you can win this war? So are you going to run again? I think a lot of people are going to be very happy. Yes, I feel betrayed. They're trying to force you out. Yes. Not only the coach, but the other two or three guys there around. All these people protesting just don't get it. Many of them don't. Isn't that slightly patronizing? I would call him out the window. <laughs> Do you think we should have psychiatric assessments? Oh, I'd be there for <laughs> weeks. <laughs> Could you keep quiet? I'm trying to read a book here. <laughs> Take spare and chuck it where it belongs in the bin. Where's Suggsy? Well, All of no. that is, where are they? Where's their where's, cheering? Where's Brian May, for God's sake? Why is Brian May? Why isn't someone on the roof of the palace? Where's the castle? Where have they know. gone? It's from that much cushier jail that Ghislaine Maxwell agreed to be interviewed for the very first time. I obviously wish I'd never met him. You're shaking your head. The British people are up in arms. Boris Johnson is out as British Prime Minister. The Conservative Party can certainly win the next election. Can we? Uh, yes. Labour 29 no, no, points no, no, ahead no, in the polls. No, no, can we? On. This is the royal tea. The question is, did he say, yes, I have taken drugs and they bent the rules to give him the visa or lied on the visa application form and therefore got it? What does a woman make? <laughs> Let it roll. A woman is given to the man in marriage. Andrew, you're simply wrong. I've been a terrible liar. That's true. I mean, would you be prepared to say that? I've been a terrible liar. Are you sorry you said that? No. I don't think it matters. You should be. Absolutely not. You should be. Interview adjourned. Which is your favorite nickname that Trump's given you? Ronda Sanctimonious or Meatball Ron? <laughs> I seen you clown Tommy Fury, so please go easy on me, bro. <laughs> please go easy. You weren't asked to give evidence to the grand jury. I have nothing to hide. I'm the only one that has been telling the truth. If you had to come up against a team that had a Russian player, would you shake their hand? No chance. No chance. It's life and death. This is war. Piss Morgan on Sunset! <laughs> what went wrong? She said, well, I've only got two years. And I said, you'll have two months if you carry on like this. What's your response to him? The whole nation deserves to know what happened. You don't drink, never taken drugs. Mm -mm. You're stinking rich. Should we be concerned, Prime Minister? <laughs> Real opinions, real debate. Is about you and your opinions. If you're thinking about it, we're talking about it. It's all about me. That was a joke.
20 minutes past 60 the time. It's me, James Max, with you till 6.30 when Dr David Ball will be here for breakfast here on Talk. Meanwhile, turning our attention to the papers, Anthony Tascal is an author and trainer. He joins me uh, in the studio and, of course, we've been going through not only the front pages but talking about the story du jour, which is uh, overnight uh, Dame Alison Rose has left a role with immediate effect as the £5 million a year chief executive of NatWest. We've been talking about whether uh, NatWest or what they need to do to restore confidence. Meanwhile, to the papers and elsewhere, look, the continued um, wildfires, uh, the devastation that's taken place on uh, certain islands and also, um, I don't know, connections seem to be everywhere. Tass, listen, you've, you've been uh, travelling around Europe. Um, it's pretty hot in places. Yeah, I just came back from Tuscany um, and we were in Florence for three days at the beginning. How big, very big North city. London of you. How very Muswell Hill of me, absolutely. Um, and it was 37, 38 degrees. And even just walking around the town, going to the Pitti Palace and the Duomo, which obviously one does, it's almost unbearable. And we were lucky where we went. I mean, you in... say that, but I mean, very often the, the, the temperatures in Europe at this time of year will be at that level. I think what's, the diff what's different now is it's sustained. I mean, in, in, in Italy, because obviously they give everything an expression, they call it la settimana infernale, the week of hell. And I think even for them, they were finding that it just became all the sort of usual yeah, of course, things. So, uh, listen, anywhere where the temperature goes above 35, it's, it's going to be, yeah. you know, too hot to kind of do things. Yeah. Um, and we get that. What I find dispiriting about all of this conversation is that there's a very real human tragedy going on in, in all of these places where these fires burn. Uh, every year we will see fires. We have done since forever, as far as I can remember. Um, and uh, You know, they, they happen in different places at different times. And I do understand what people are saying about the climate, but I genuinely wring my hand at some of the things we're being asked to do. Um, almost people's political agendas which are driven by, um, you know, what they say about the climate. And I think the two are, to an extent, unconnected. Well, I think the climate scientists are saying this is one of the many manifestations of what's happening. Sure, that these and, things and are I, get becoming, that, I get that the climate it's is the changing. Freak, yeah, but it's the frequency and the intensity. I think those, those are the things yes. that are beginning to become alarming. And I think uh, being serious, because when I got But back, isn't that the problem, though, that people are using this to alarm others as opposed to... What we really should be doing is making sensible decisions about, first of all, what we can do to cope. Because even if we did all the measures that some of these protesters want us to do, the effect probably wouldn't come in for 50 years. So there's a huge lag when it comes to weather, mm. when it comes to climate. And there are uncontrollable elements that, frankly, even the scientists have no idea about. You know, you can, they can't get the weather forecast right for next week, uh, let alone looking into long-term trends, uh, although they p can perhaps extrapolate data. So I, I have problems when people start to look into the future anyway so we should be looking into how to cope with it number one and number two we could make action today that would make a substantial difference which is to waste less and we're not being asked to do that but we are asked for traffic calming zones you les more tax um paying for this paying for that lining other people's pockets and doing things that will make no difference it, to me it makes no sense uh, as you know what's 20 minutes in something like that um i haven't talked about behavioral economics so i will now uh, as you know, behavioural economics is about trying to change behaviour, and I think you're absolutely right. We, we need to have a, a really s systematic, joined-up strategy for behaviour change at individual, collective and societal level. And almost nothing seems to stick. Uh, whether it's about alarming people, as, as you said, whether it's about saying individual people need to make small changes, yep. whether it's about saying government needs to be doing something top-down, no one has joined all these dots together. They haven't, and they probably won't. Meanwhile, uh, we must rattle through some other stories, otherwise yes. we'll never get there. And I know that you want to talk about the company formerly known as Twitter. I do. Again, is this, because... a, is this, a, is this a mass? Is this a, 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 a sort of committal by an individual who's bought a company of just, um, I don't know, mass destruction of the thing that they bought? I think so. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go into conspiracy. I don't know he's genuinely tried to do that. But for me, he's taken everything that worked about Twitter and pretty much destroyed it in terms of calling it X. So for a start, I mean, I've now got it on, I think everyone has now, it's on the top left-hand corner. And one of the things I want to do is I want to click on it to try and close the page. So that doesn't work. And I think what he's trying to do is, is align it with, you know, his company, SpaceX. So he's trying to put, as it were, all of his X into one basket. OK. Um, so I think part of, the, of what he's d destroyed for me is the fact that Twitter... <laughs> 
as a brand. It had a personality. You had the bird, you had tweets. It was all quite light and small and fun. And yes, it could do big things. That's a bit of hell, but other than that. Yeah, it, apart from that, it's, that's what it's turned into. But I think this X thing, it, it, it's quite, it's almost like sort of dark and, and 1930s. OK, so, so, so X exists. He's destroying mm. value brand and all the rest of it. Yes. To my mind, though, Threads, even though it's there, have not capitalised on this to the extent that they don't have the functionality and they haven't come up with anything new or particular, and they're not trying to grab news stories. I don't know why, having launched, uh, Threads aren't doing more to either make people aware or to hold conversations or to make themselves relevant. Yeah, I would have thought Zuckerberg was, was ready or his team would have been ready knowing what was going on with Musk, and they don't seem to have. No. Now, it, as you know, I talk about storytelling. One of my books, the storytelling book, is subtitled The Golden Thread, which goes back to Thesis and the Monitor. So I'm waiting any moment now for the royalties that are coming from uh, Okay. Zuckerberg. Well, we, we, have <clears> to, <throat> we have to deal with the rest of these stories probably in a sentence each, but let's see how we okay. go. Oh, good. Another day, front page of the mirror, they seem to ignore what's going on in the world, and they've got train delays. Um, I mean, they're, they're going on about uh, ticket offices, aren't they? Yeah, the reason I wanted to, to, to pick up on it is not so much the, the, the ticket offices and the, the, the strikes that we've had, but again, it's another example, and this seems to be, if I can use the word, a thread running through all this, about our institutions. And we've talked in the past, and obviously you've done it many times, about the NHS. And I think our railways are another in institution that actually we rely on, that actually is we part do. of what they makes need Britain radical, great. Radical reform. Right, and someone have, needs to do that. Well, they do indeed. Uh, they, we're going to have... in. <laughs> Almost in a word or two, uh, the Daily Express talks about uh, Latin in schools. Should it make a return? Uh, yeah, I'm a classicist. I'm a lapsed classicist. So I spent many years uh, studying Latin. Look at all the books that are being written about sort of... Re re I wish I'd understood more about Latin and the value rather than giving it up because I thought it was boring. I might have learned Firstly, it's, it's great if you want to learn languages, so it's help, it, it'll help yes. you learn French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese and Romanian, never mentioned Romanian. Secondly, some great expressions. I could give you an ad hoc example, but I won't. Um, but also, it, it teaches us about history. Okay. If you look at the emperors, if you look at some of the great leaders of Rome, you can see all, what's happening all in of, politics. All of, all of those. Who's 80 today? Um, Michael Richard, I think his middle name, Jagger. There we uh, go. He's still around, still Unbelievable. doing well. Unbelievable. Nick um, Jagger at 80. Well done, him. Uh, and indeed, well done, Taz, for going through so many stories. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed for that. If people want to find out more about you and the books that you've written, where do they go? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn as Taz Tazgul, and I'm at Tazwell Hill on Twitter. There we go. Anthony Tascal, author and trainer. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank going through thanks. the papers here on Talk, where for breakfast you have a delicious <laughs> Dr <laughs> David Bull. A very good morning. Good morning. A mo, a mass, a mass, a mama, a mass, a mant. Very good. Thank you very much. Balum, 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 blah, 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 Can I just stay on for another half hour until Latin? Latin. Very important, by the way, for medicine. Yes. It is. Lots of medicine, lots of law. And, and actually, I wish we'd been taught Latin. I, I, I didn't learn Latin at school, but it would have been very useful, as you yes. say, as the, uh, as the root language of I many th other I languages. I think that because it was always sold as a dead language, rather than necessarily being the foundation and building blocks of another, mm. um, that's why it would have been more relevant. And I always, I always found studying things that I didn't believe were relevant mm. uh, difficult to do. I agree with you, totally. So, so there we go, we start starting a agreement. bit of Latin etymology, quickly, one minute. Oh, yes. I, I love often a bit are, of I'm obsessed with etymology, where words come from. People, uh, so am I. People so often say I. to me, what's your favourite bit of etymology that everyone uses, but no-one understands where it comes from? So hours, minutes and seconds. So hour is just Latin, aura meaning an hour, but minute, if you reduce an hour, you diminish an hour. So it's diminute, it's the, an hour no, that's diminished. that's fantastic. And then if you diminish it a second time... Yes. Seconds. Secunda, for the second time. Second time Secunda. Secunda. There you go. Now, who doesn't find Every that fascinating? Every day that. is a school day. Get Absolutely me back right. on right. Well, Meanwhile, but the derivation I, of words generally is really interesting. I assume, school. however, on breakfast, We're not that's talking not about that. No, I'm assuming no. that you're talking about the fact <laughs> that all the newspaper front pages are, are wrong. wrong. Dame Alison Rose has gone. Five million quid a year, she's so, paid. So, <laughs> Howard, Howard Davis, three quarters of a million pounds a year to be chair yeah. of a company that 12 hours ago he was saying Full confidence. Full confidence. Full confidence. Which obviously means she, she's leaving. Um, before I went to bed last night, I tweeted her position is untenable and looks like I was right, obviously. I said uh, they that last full, week. Yeah, well, they have full confidence in her. And then I woke up this morning and obviously that broke, I think, at 1.45 this morning, saying she's out. But the question is, and Nigel Farage has gone very much on the offensive, saying actually the others need to go as well. Correct. Uh, just in terms of, And also in terms of corporate governance, you don't sit there and have a conversation with a BBC journalist saying various people bank with us, number one. Yes. Secondly, you do not not discuss their financial position. And nor do you lie. 
nor do you lie. And the other point and she is... she did lie, because actually those criteria are soft. That. Yes, they're <laughs> soft, but then the other point is, why are all the people at Coote still in their jobs? Well, it's a very good question, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. and, and the thing is that this is a very... And why are we a shareholder? 39% well, of the company well, is owned the, by the well, state. Well, that's the other point. 39% of it is owned by us, and therefore they have a duty to us. And obviously the Treasury and the government lent very heavily on that West, and rightly so. And, and this is not going away, is it? No, it's not going away. And uh, we're also talking about Jeremy Hunt, because he's... Uh, there's one of the papers this morning, I think in the Telegraph... It's the Times. Uh, or the Times, says uh, that actually businesses need to put back more back in and and essentially saying that the profits they're making and he's got a point in terms of actually they're making vast profits and they need to reduce their prices when the wholesale cost comes down but this is the chancellor who presided over the highest tax burden in in 40 years and so, the tax system is not fit for purpose no, it because isn't. it's not capturing those profits exactly exactly right also I mean, we're talking about mirror, mr hunt uh, the uk the second slowest growth in the g7 it has been revised upwards but also mm. what's happening to interest rates many people saying they're going up three more times we'll talk about the Winds of frame doesn't work, oh, which is what, is what I've been saying for a very long time. And also we're talking about the Wagner Group. We've talked about uh, all these things for too long. Uh, so many things coming up in breakfast. That's next with Dr David Bull here on Talk. I'm back tonight at nine and tomorrow from five.